welcome to the Mom Owned and Operated Podcast, the podcast about moms and for moms, where we have candid conversations about running a business, raising a family, and remembering ourselves. I'm your host, Rita Suzanne, a single mom of four, digital strategist, and provider of no-nonsense business strategies and tactics. Hi, this is Mom Owned and Operated. I am Rita Suzanne, and today I have Sarah Martin with me. She's a dub Sato expert, and I am so excited to talk to you today, Sarah, and talk about how you're raising a family, running your business, and remembering yourself. So please tell us all way more about you than that. All right. Um, well, I am a mom to a two-year-old toddler. He is crazy. Um, climbs on everything. I am a wife and I've been married for it'll be six years this year. Um, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we have a four-year-old dog. I don't want to forget about her. Um, she <laughs> first born <laughs> and, um, I am a dubsado specialist. I help work with busy mompreneurs that don't have the time um, or energy to figure out dubsado, or they just feel really stuck. They need like a second eye on things or consultations. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do that as well on top of being a mom. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So why do you love dub Soto so much? I mean, everybody has their preferences, right? Yeah. I, so I love dub Soto because, um, it just, it all makes sense to me. It's like the, everything I'm, I'm all about like systems and organization mm-hmm. and it just, it, everything can be so automated. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can really automate like your whole onboarding and offboarding process and it just makes your life so much easier. So why not? Why not? use it? So I just really like it. It's my favorite. (laughs) So what can you do in there? So you're saying, like you set up your contract, you set up all of your, like you accept payment from there. And then what else do, does it do? I haven't, I haven't used it, so I don't really know. Oh, um, so, (laughs) so, so, so. Um, you can do all of the forms, you can do contracts, um, you don't need DocuSign or anything, mm. it would, you can sign contracts electronically inside the nice. Um, You can do proposals, um, which they can select the package that they want and then get invoiced for that um, mm. just automatically and fill out the contract at the same time. Um, they can, you can send questionnaire forms, um, have lead captures, where basically that takes place of your contact page on your site. Mm-hmm. And that way, all of those leads that come in filter through, um, they filter from your website into Dubsado. And so you have that client information already in there mm-hmm. and you can start them down a whole rabbit hole of what, you know, send them the scheduler and then the questionnaire form and the proposal and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, you can do, and you can automate with workflows. It's just, I, she's like, I just love calls. it so much. <laughs> I just love it so much. You can schedule calls. Um, like have a, a bunch of different schedulers uh, going mm-hmm. on and post those on your uh, website too. It's just, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. You can also organize clients based on like job, like how, where they are in the process mm-hmm. um, as well. So it's just, yeah. So it's just, really you're cool. just trying to make everybody's uh, business run smoother because, yeah. you know, a lot of times people are just, you know, very reactive, just, you know, doing what, uh, and sometimes forgetting steps and doing all the things. I know when I'm working with a design client, I'm, I even ask them, what is your process, uh, for this and that? Because, you know, maybe it doesn't seem related to your website, but a lot of times it really does because once someone hits your website, what do they do? And then once they, uh, hire you, then what? you know, and then all of these things, they all, it all plays together. And a lot of times people don't really realize that these things like need to coexist, right. Mm-hmm. In in order to make it easier for all for us. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I actually work with, um, moms. I work that I work with them through their processes. So mm-hmm. that we make sure that everything will be compatible inside the auto. Cause some mm-hmm. the auto doesn't do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, I, I think it is moving in that direction where it will be able to handle lots of integrations and everything. But that way we have like conversations and we map out their whole workflow. Mm-hmm. So that way they, uh, their workflows. So that way they have like seamless and maybe it's not all automated, but it's mostly, auto- it's better than what it was 
Well, okay. yeah, because you have to push them through to the next step, right? Like they can't, you just, Dubsado just doesn't know when the project is over, like you have to say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. Sometimes you have to like pause the workflow or make sure you approve an action or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty seamless. Yeah. I mean, that's good. It, I think it's always better to have whatever processes work best for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't say, Oh, my process is going to work. It's going to fix your, mm -hmm. your whole thing is going to solve your life. It might not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, yeah. um, okay. So tell us before you started focusing in on Dubsado, what were you doing before that? Um, so I, the first thing I did was I was a VA and I worked with like just general admin VA. I did everything. I did Pinterest um, pins. I did social media templates. I did like mood boards mm -hmm. and like regular admin things like data entry and stuff and email uh, management. And then I worked and then I moved into project management because I really like organizing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I like this a lot. Um, but I started moving into project management and Dubsado setups. And then um, end of last year, I just decided I'm not doing project management anymore. I just want, I just want one-time clients right? and I just want Dubsado. Mm -hmm. So um, that is what I do now. I mean, it's always, I think it's better to niche down and focus in on something and especially something that you really love. And, you know, it just makes everything so much easier, especially when you're running around chasing a toddler almost all the time, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. What have you found to be the most challenging thing about running a business and, you know, um, raising your son? Oh God. Uh, well, a lot of times I, I had, a, I had trouble figuring out when I was going to do, do things and get things done. And that was really hard. That was harder when I was a virtual assistant because I had clients that needed me to do things at certain times. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be flexible and I had to do things while he was awake. Yeah. And that was kind of, that was kind of difficult. He, he doesn't really allow me to work like on my lap. So, um, <laughs> which is how I get, how I make money. So, right. <laughs> I he doesn't been, understand that. <laughs> they don't know. Um, so I have basically just been working during nap time and when he goes mm -hmm. to bed, or I have, um, if I have a really big project or a really long meeting, mm -hmm. I send him away some, like to a grandparent or something. So I make sure that someone can watch him. Mm -hmm. And that way I get a break anyway. And right. he gets to play and he's not in my area and I can, you know. And open. plus that mom, <laughs> that mom guilt has been, re, you know, removed, oh, yeah. right? Because- um, I feel like, or I remember when I started my business, my sons were, I want to say like five and seven or four and six. I don't remember, but, um, I would be sitting on my computer. First of all, after I had my first and my second son, I used to read books like physical books, but after <laughs> having him, I had to transfer to reading audible books because, or, you know, looking at things on my phone because and he wouldn't let me like actually hold a book because he wanted all my attention. So I'm sure that that's how your son is. But I, when I started my business and I have my computer, I had both of my sons, they would just sit beside me. They didn't want to do anything. They just wanted to sit beside me and make me watch something like, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Einstein, little Einsteins or some, you know, something. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was just fun for them to just be near me, you know, so yeah but it became out of control because they would draw pictures of me holding, you know, doing nothing but sitting on my laptop. And like, that was how they perceived me because I was doing nothing but working. You know, I was so obsessed with trying to make sure that my business was going to succeed that I wasn't really doing a lot of stuff for myself. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't doing any of the things that I should be doing. So that's why I wanted to do stuff like this so that I could find out from other moms, how are you taking care of yourself? You know, since we have everything else to take care of. So please tell us that. Oh, well, I have been really bad with self-care, but um, that's because I, uh, I don't, I don't know what it is. I guess self-care to me is like, I get to take a shower by myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, usually I shower at night, so he's not even awake, right. but, um, you know, um, but I, I do like to send him to some, you know, my mom's house for the night. And then I get the whole night and I get to choose, oh, do I want to stay up till like one o'clock and watch movies or, um, 
or you know, everyone want to go sleep, on a date right? night yeah. or go to sleep. And then I get to sleep in until, you know, whenever I usually, yeah. my body usually wakes up at like by yeah. eight, if I haven't woken up, which is really unfortunate, but I don't, right. Have to right. but, um, yeah, I, um, I, I used to go before him, I used to go shopping before I had him. I used to do like shopping trips, go to TJ Maxx and buy stuff. And right. I can't even get myself to buy myself anything sometimes it's so hard. I want to buy him everything. And I'm like, well, I guess I should buy a new pair of underwear. That would be nice. Right. <laughs> that's so. why, I, that's why I'm saying like we, as moms, it, we always put ourselves last. And so I think it's really important just to remember, you know, you are, important. You need to take care of yourself. And, you know, I I think it helps us too to be better moms because we're not so stressed because I just remember myself being very edgy, I guess you would say on edge. Like, I'm like, no, I'm trying to finish this thing. I'll come play with you later, you know? And, um, you know, I don't think that that's, you know, it's like, I wanted kids so bad. And here I am telling yeah. them, oh, leave me, leave me be, leave me alone. Yes. I used to be so stressed. I used to wear my son when I had to really work. He was really small when I was a VA. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my husband would come home and I'd be so moody and I'd be so stressed. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have to get this done. It's already an hour. I'm already an hour late and I have to right. do this. I couldn't right. do it because Sawyer was cranky or mm-hmm. um, I like he, he napped on me and I couldn't move, mm-hmm. um, you know, and my, some of my clients really, I did understand, but some did not. And, it, and it's right. fine if they, you know, I'm just, we're not that, we're not compatible, but right. it was just very, I was so stressed, like constantly. <laughs> which also makes the kids, you know, cranky because they're yes. like taking our cues and stuff. And so I found when I, when I first started my business, I met someone and she told me, first of all, I had a lot of mindset issues that I needed to fix, which I have, you know, through a lot of journaling and self-reflection and all that other stuff. And that's super important and very, um, very helpful. I know a lot of people are kind of resistant to it, but mm. If you could just get in there, it's going to help you. Um, But then she also told me, she said, you know, you need to get dressed every day. And I would say, I don't really have time. Like I roll out of bed and I do all I want to do is help my clients and I got to do this for them. And I got to help them because you are committed to them, like almost in a people pleaser way. Right. And you just say, I'm not important enough to do this. And she told me, she's like, you have to do this for yourself. And ever since then, I just started doing it. It's not that I, I don't like get crazy dressed up. I'm still wearing sweatpants. I'm still wearing, you know, like, (laughs) and I, and I barely put any makeup on and do, do, you know, or do my hair. I'm like, this is like leftover from two days ago. And, you know, so I just do like the very bare minimum so that I can feel good about myself. And when I leave the house and not feel, you know, (laughs) self-conscious. Yeah, I I hear you. (laughs) I mean, so that I feel like is that is like one of the minimum things that we can do to like care for ourselves. But one of my other guests, she told me this thing and I thought it was super important and really something for us to keep in mind that self-care isn't always like going and doing something. It isn't always like, um, you know, getting your nails done or going for a massage and all these things that people like make it seem like is important for you, but it's, um, just being mindful in the moment. And if you need a break, you go take yourself a break, you know, go, um, you know, go do these things so that you can control that, um, that mood. And I think it's like probably, a habit that we have to get into. It's not something that's just going to click and we're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mindful now. You know, I think sometimes I, um, my husband has been out of town for a while. And so Mm -hmm. I've been just alone with the toddler. My, um, I have been, I have not been getting dressed every day (laughs) because I, I, by the time I realized that I'm not, I actually took him on a walk in our neighborhood, like four days ago. And I didn't realize I was wearing pajama pants. I was totally in my pajamas. I, I probably looked like a homeless person and I just didn't even realize it. So I was like way far down. Um, I couldn't, couldn't turn back. Um, but I, I think I used to, when my husband, uh, before my husband left in January for a trip, mm-hmm. um, we'd go to like Target, he would come home from work and I'm like, okay, so dinner's ready. I'm going to Target. I'll see you in like two hours. I'm just right. going to go walk around and have coffee and 
exactly. Uh, you know, be alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's, and that's what we have to do. And I, and I, I used to go to my son's school, like, and wearing full, full pajama pants. I didn't care, you know, at all, probably hadn't showered in two days, you know, yeah. so I completely get it. You know, it's like, it's just something that I'm saying, like, to try maybe yes yes I <laughs> not gotta, you I specifically to no I'm not talking about you Sarah please I know, I know. <laughs> it, but that is a good practice to get into I do feel a little bit better when I do actually like get dressed in the morning like I'm yeah. gonna go somewhere but I might not right, <laughs> right. I always thought so for me it was like <sighs> sometimes my clients would want to jump on a call and not just a call like a zoom or back then Skype, yeah. you know, and I would just be like, Oh my gosh, no, like, I don't want nobody to see me, like <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, and I think that's just my own, that's my own issue, but I just, you know, said, well, at least if I can look okay, you know, when I see myself in the mirror and I think, yeah, Oh, you're not a total disaster, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've been looking at myself lately and I'm like, wow, I'm a train wreck today. It's fine. I'm no, not going no to you're fine. Today. You're beautiful. I'm, I'm all right. I, I'm, I'm better most days. But yeah, there are, there are days I look and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Right. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, when you leave like working from a corporate job where you get to get up and or you say you we say get up now and get dressed and all this other stuff, you get to get up. But no we had to get up and get dressed and look a certain way in order to, you know, go, but when you're an entrepreneur, you're just at home, you know, all the time. And I think it's easy to slip into these habits of, you know, putting ourselves last again and again and again. And then it becomes so commonplace, like even for like buying clothes, I completely understand that too, because there's time. I mean, there's, I have clothes in my drawer that I've had for years, but they're just so comfortable. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I'm just going to keep wearing these. I don't wear them outside the house though. Like I've gotten to that point where I'm like, these are not okay for outside. Yes. Yes. I have have some clothes. I'm like, yeah, these are only for what I want. But then I've got, unless like lately I've been forgetting that there are, there are things I should not wear outside of the house, but (laughs) <laughs> I mean, we just have to, we just have to do, you know, and it's so hard, especially when as a new mom, right. It's like getting into the habit of all these things. And plus you're running a business. Like it's just yeah. a lot to, to keep in mind. And just, you know, I just hope that we can all like try to make better habits because believe me, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I need to make a lot of improvements. Um, you know, so I, I just, um, I love to hear what other people are doing and kind of share other t- you know, tips about how we can all be, um, take better care of ourselves in general. Yeah. Cause it's so stressful to, to do all these things at once. And then, you know, the pandemic has only added to it because now like we can't even go out to outside, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can, I always took my kids to the park and all that stuff during yeah, all yeah. Of this, but yeah. you know, it's like, you want to get out and socialize and you can't even do that because, you know, everybody's um, being careful and cautious and nobody wants to even look you in the eye anymore, which is yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, it's the whole, whole thing. Is just... I know we use that part of my self care. I, so I don't know if this is self care, but I would, I was a part of a mom play group for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, actually like the first until COVID happened, we were doing like, we were doing things with this play group, like three or four times a week where we yeah. would go and leave just like so we could leave the house and we wouldn't be alone and he would have my son would have someone to play with mm-hmm. um and we would it would it was a group of maybe like 10 of us and we would just all it was all moms and there was one dad um and we would all just like be at a meet at a park or if I wanted to go to the zoo I'd say hey you want to go to the zoo right. I'm going at this time and we're going to meet here um so if you want to come come and yeah. oh, at least one person always came so I love that so you started a meet up yeah, meet up. That's exactly where we had it. It was, uh, I can't wait for it to start back up again. Cause I, it was so you fun it, right? and it was, and it was a way for me to get out. Even when I wasn't a part of a 
uh, you know, like I wasn't seeing my employee or not employees, but like coworkers every day. Right. Right. I just got really lonely. Yeah. I started, I started a meetup too, after I had my second son. So I have both of them. It it was supposed to be just a meetup to like walk and talk. So we are all stroller, you know, we would all have our strollers and then we would go on these trails and, and walk and talk. I am still friends with some of those women that I met and we're talking 10 years ago. Yeah. And so I think that any type of, you know, any type of adult stuff, like even though there's kids around, like communicating with other, other moms is, you know, definitely self-care because, you know, we can relate to each other and understand like the hard times. Oh yeah. And we are, and and I wasn't, I knew I wasn't alone. And then we, I just had someone I could like have an adult conversation with Mm -hmm. because like when we were doing that play group, my son wasn't like talking yet. Right. Right. (laughs) So I was just alone for like nine hours a day. Boring, <laughs> right? It's like like, someone that didn't talk and I was just like really alone and I was busy working, but then I need the distraction some days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was really good to have that. Yeah. I, t- I totally recommend that to like any mom. That's I hope up. it comes <laughs> back for you because that it's so key in order to, and plus it's good socialization for the kids. Oh yeah. You know? So I feel so bad for my son. He doesn't even know what to do around. We were at the playground the other day. He doesn't even know what to do around another kid (laughs) he was so excited and he just didn't know how to to interact right they don't even know how to talk to each other anymore he couldn't even walk he couldn't run straight he had to let you walk he was so excited he was walking like crooked (laughs) 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 he just couldn't handle himself he was so excited Oh, that's so, that's so cute. So hopefully now that the weather is starting to break, especially here in Ohio, because we're both in Ohio, yeah. we will be able to get outside like here. Um, it's Cause I'm two hours South of you is, um, was actually warm for the last couple of days. Yes. It was warm here too. It was like today it's now like, it's like low fifties, like high forties ish. Yeah. But, um, you're like, I'm still going outside. I don't care. It's, it's nice and sunny. <laughs> I'm probably going to sit outside on my patio. I took my patio furniture out the other day. <laughs> right. I, I mean, because it's, we're so, it's so depressing to be in this cold weather. You yeah, know, sure. I, I want to move back to California just so that I can be outside in the sun. <laughs> oh yeah. We lived in San Diego for a year. My husband was in the Marines, And so we were there for like I, I was there for a year. He was like for five and it was awesome. Except we didn't have family there. So that was, that was the sucky part for me, yeah. but so warm. So and it was warm. like the dry heat. That was yeah. the best heat. I, I lived there for 15 years with my ex-husband and we lived in um, like outside of Orange County, LA area. Oh, yeah. So really close to San Diego, which, and it's so beautiful there, it, but you know, obviously it's so expensive to live there. But we I was going in, uh, hiking every single day. I loved it. Yeah. We lived, um, in, we lived like maybe 15 minutes from Temecula. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I, yeah. I loved it. I, oh man, it was, if I could move all my family or some of them to, to the West coast, I would, we would move there in a heartbeat. It's expensive, right. but yeah, um, it is. And taxes are so high and everything, yeah. but I, I just, I want to go back so bad. My, um, my ex-husband's family lives there. So you're part of them. So we could go back, but I don't know. I'm torn. You know, like <laughs> I said, I said, if I go back, I have to figure out a way for my mom to come with me. So, yeah. you know, we'll so see. Last week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, yeah. and that's what I was thinking. Well, I'm like a mother-in-law house, like, you know, backyard thing. Yeah. Like, you can, we both need some distance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she can have a little like house shed type thing. Yeah. <laughs> <In the backyard. laughs> Yeah, because I'm a neat freak and she's uh, not. And so uh, that would definitely not be great for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, okay. So tell everybody where you, where we can find you online. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at, and they're both the same handle. So at the Dipsado Queen is my handle for both. Love and it. I share tons of free content. So based on my Facebook page, I share a Dipsado tip almost every Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Wednesdays on my Instagram, I share different Dipsado tips on almost every Wednesday. i um, trying to be more consistent. Um, on that page as well. And then I have um, some deals going on and that's all on my Instagram and Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't advertise on my website, so you have to follow me to get the discount. 
That's so, a good idea. I love it. Yes. Also forgot to get to it on my, on my website. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah and what's your website um at sarah martin dot sarah r martin yeah because it's such a common name right you have to i did have to put my middle initial mm-hmm. like, dang middle initial <laughs> i didn't want to <laughs> listen i i could tell you the story about how i started out as rita morales which is my previous married name got divorced then it got remarried again and decided, you know what? I'm not doing this uh, last name thing with them again. I'm just going to use my middle name. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that way you don't have to rebrand over yeah. and over and over. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for taking the time yeah. and chatting today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And there you have it. I want to encourage you to remember that being a mom who runs her own business is not easy. We all struggle, but just keep moving forward and don't forget to make time for yourself. As moms, we are usually the first thing to go to the bottom of the list. If your business is overwhelming you and you need real solutions, not just some sugar-coated suggestions, apply to work with me at ritasuzanne.com apply. 